Okay, welcome to class today. And um, today we're going to be going over kitchen equipment. And we'll first watch a PowerPoint that um, will explain some of the kitchen equipment that we'll be using through the year. And you know, as we're watching it, if you could just think about if there's some of the kitchen equipment that it's familiar or you've done something with, think about that because we'll discuss that afterwards. Kitchen equipment. Dry measuring cups. A dry measuring cup is used for measuring solid cooking ingredients like flour, sugar, oats. Dry measuring cups are made from plastic or metal and sets usually include a one cup, half cup, a third cup, and a fourth a cup. Now with um, the dry measuring cups, ingredients should be filled to the top, um, usually heaping over and then scraped off with the back of a knife or any straight um, object. Liquid measuring cups. Used specifically for measuring liquids, liquid is poured into the cup up to the appropriated marker on the side of the cup. Clear, plastic, or glass measuring cups are easiest to use. So you, so you can see the measurements on the side. When measuring liquids, fill the measuring cup with your liquid and set it on the counter and then get down to see the cup at eye level to check the amount. Measuring spoons. A measuring spoon is a spoon used to measure an amount of an ingredient, either liquid or dry, when cooking. Measuring spoons may be made of plastic, metal, and other materials. Colander. A colander is a bowl-shaped kitchen utensil with holes in it used for draining food such as pasta or rice. The perforated nature of the colander allows liquid to drain through while retaining the solids inside. Cutting board. A cutting board is a durable board on which to place material for cutting. Kitchen cutting boards are often made of wood or plastic and come in various widths and sizes. Tongs. Tongs are commonly used as a kitchen utensil as they provide a way to move, rotate, and turn the food with delicate precision. Wire whisk. Used to blend ingredients smooth or to incorporate air into a mixture in a process known as whisking or whipping. Strainer. A strainer is a form of sieve used to separate solids from liquid. Peeler. A slotted metal blade attached to a handle that is used to remove the outer skin or peel of certain vegetables, frequently potatoes and carrots, and fruits such as apples, pears. A peeler differs from a knife in that the blade has a slot cut into it which is sharpened on the inside edge, while the other side prevents the blade from cutting too far into the vegetable. Kitchen shears. Used for butterflying or quartering chicken, trimming pie dough, shaping parchment to um, line cake pans, snipping herbs, or cutting lengths of kitchen twine. Grater. Used to grate foods into fine pieces. Graters produce shreds that are thinner at the ends than the middle. Wooden spoons. Used for mixing ingredients for cooking or baking. Pastry blender. A pastry blender is used to mix a hard or solid fat into flour in order to make pastries. It is usually made in narrow metal strips or wires attached to a handle and is used by pressing down on the items to be mixed, known as cutting in. It is also used to break these fats or shortening butter or lard into smaller pieces. Muffin pan. A mold in which muffins or cupcakes are baked. Muffin tins can be made out of aluminum, stainless steel, cast iron, or silicone. In addition, aluminum and stainless steel muffin tins may be coated with Teflon or other non-stick coatings. Cooling rack. Used to allow air to circulate freely to cool baked goods 
and to prevent them from getting soggy from con condensation. A tight grid is typically the best formula format for a cooling rack to prevent thin baked goods from breaking or falling through. Sifter, to put flour, for example, through a sieve or other straining device in order to separate the fine from the coarse particles. Baster, a large glass, plastic, or metal tube with a rubber bulb at the one end and a small opening at the other to be filled with butter, drippings, etc. for basting food as it is cooking. Sieve, a utensil consisting of a wire or plastic mesh held in a frame used for straining solids from liquids, for separating coarser from finer particles, or for reducing soft solids to a pulp. Funnel, a cone-shaped utensil with a tube at the apex for conducting liquid or other substances through a small opening as into a bottle, jug, or the like. Rubber scraper, used to remove material from mixing bowls, the long handle allows it to be used to remove contents of bowls as well as jars such as mayonnaise jars. And a metal spatula, a handheld tool that is used for lifting, flipping, or spreading. Spatulas have a handle that is long enough to keep the, the holder's hand away from what is being lifted or spread, as well as away from a hot surface. The blade of the spatula is wide and thin. Ladle, a large long handled spoon with a cup shaped bowl. Used for serving soup, stew, or sauce. Okay, have any of you used any of the equipment that we just saw in the video? And if you have used it or had an experience with something in it we just saw, what was that experience? So great, quite a few of you know the names of uh, some of the lab equipment and I've actually used some, so that is great. Now, um, I have a question, and that is, why do you think it's important for you to know the names and the reasons why we use different lab equipment in the kitchen? Okay, um, I have a question, and I'd like you to think about it for a minute. And um, the question is, is what if you were stranded on a deserted island for a few months? And um, what three pieces of kitchen equipment would um, you want to have with you that you would think would be the most important for your survival and why? So that's the question. Now, let me just describe this deserted island. It's like a tropical, warm place. You're all by yourself, but there also are all kinds of animals. There's all kinds of fruit and all kinds of vegetables available. And so just think about that for a minute, and um, then we'll get up and move on over to our kitchen units. So, Okay, now let's break up into your kitchen groups and go to your kitchen and um, go to your dining room table and sit down. And on your tables, um, you'll have this question that's typed up on a sheet. And I want one of you to um, read the question aloud to your group. And then I want you to talk about your different ideas on your answer to the question and your answers. And then um, I want everyone to have a chance to give their input. And then after we're done, we'll I'll discuss it and talk about what our ideas are. OK, I want you to stay in your kitchen groups for this next activity. I'm going to show you a certain item that is an equipment that you will be using in the kitchen. I'll show you where it's located in the kitchen, and then when I do that, then I want you guys to find the exact same item, and then we're going to discuss it, talk about how we use it, also how we care for that item. I want each one of you to look at it, pass it around so that you all can see what it looks like, and then we'll go to the next item and kind of go over some of the items so that um, you, be, you can be familiar with um, what the items are, what they look like, what we use them for, and how to take care of them. Okay, so the first item is the 
dry measuring cup. Now the dry measuring cup is in the left cupboard on the second shelf. So number one in the group, will you please get the dry measuring cup? Everybody else look and see where that's located. Now who knows from what we learned with the PowerPoint um, what the dry measuring cup is used for. Okay good, great. And so basically it's used for measuring dry ingredients like flour and oats and also who knows um, how we go about measuring dry ingredients. Okay, great. Yeah, so you um, spoon the like basic flour into the cup and have it heaping over the edges. And then you take a flat object like a back of a knife and you level it off and so that it's smooth and level and um, all the way to the top. So, yeah, great. So now the next tool that we will go and get and we'll have number two in the kitchens do that, is um, a colander. Okay, so the colander is on the bottom left hand side of the kitchen, and it's on the first shelf. So um, if number one can, or number two could go and get that. Everybody look and see where it's located, and then pass it around to each member of the group. Now, who remembers, or does anybody remember what the colander is used for? Okay, great. Yeah, the colander is used for straining. So, let's say you have some noodles that you've cooked that are in water, and you pour the noodles in the water into the colander over the sink, and so then it strains out the water, and then you shake it, and you just have your noodles left. So, um, it's a great tool for separating water from um, like noodles and whatever. Okay, and okay, the next activity is called equipment race. And we'll um, stay in our kitchen groups and what I'll do is one person, so number one will start off in the, each kitchen and I will call out a, a piece of equipment that we've gone over and then as soon as I call it out, the person in the kitchen will find that piece of equipment. The first one to do so will raise their piece of equipment up in the air and um, then that kitchen will get a point. And we'll continue doing this. Each um, person will probably get five, six times to do this. Okay, and now the next activity is I want you to get into your kitchen groups and get your uh, cookbook out and as a group I want you to choose three recipes and then write down the equipment that you will need to use to be able to do that re those recipes and um, separate them into you know one recipe and the equipment that you need the heading of the next recipe and the equipment you'll need and then the third with the equipment that you'll need to use. Okay. Okay, the next thing we'll do is I'm going to hand out this worksheet. And if you can see that. And what what I'd like you to do is look at the pictures and then I'd like you to go through and write down um, what the kitchen tool is and then what the tool is used for and then how to care for it. Everybody can um, fill that out and when we're done we can go over it. Okay, so um, hopefully you've learned something about kitchen equipment and it most definitely is going to be useful throughout this year as we do fun cooking projects. And now the worksheet that I had you fill out about the with the pictures of the different kitchen equipment, take that home and kind of look at it and study it and make sure that you know um, about each piece of equipment and that you'll be able to identify it and then you'll also be able to say what it's used for and how to take care of it. So, okay, thank you.